everyone, it's Tracy Steen back in the kitchen here and we are getting ready to cook for you. I hope that some of you have grabbed the ingredients that were posted on my Facebook page on Monday and then again this morning and that you're ready to cook with me. Um, it's going to be a very tasty day today. We are making broccoli cashew chicken and I am excited about this dish. This is hopefully, I think this is going to be done in 30 minutes. It should be a real quick one and it's going to be super tasty. Now, just at the outset, I would like to say, if you are cooking this along and you want to have an accompaniment aside, a couple of options here. Uh, of course, you could do rice, brown rice, or you could do quinoa, um, white rice, I guess, if that's what your family likes. I am making zoodles with this. So have you had zoodles before? You just basically take a zucchini and spiralize it, and we're going to toss it with a little bit of pesto, and Bob's your uncle, it's gonna be delicious. Okay, so you get going whatever you like to make. I am gonna make the zoodles. Cauliflower rice would go really well with this dish as well. So also coming up in this episode, stay tuned as we talk about three conversations that I believe everyone should have when thinking about their relationship with food. So we'll be talking about that throughout this episode. All right, let's get started. I hope that you have your ingredients ready to go. Grab an apron, grab a knife, and let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start by just chopping up our chicken, 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 and giving it a little pan fry. So in my cast iron skillet, which I use to help leach iron into my body, because I am anemic, I'm gonna put just about a tablespoon of our coconut oil, okay? So I'll just get that going in there. And onto the chicken. So we're gonna take I think it's uh, on the recipe about two pounds of chicken. So I kind of guesstimate that with the chicken breasts and I'm doing three large chicken breasts. So I'm just gonna give this a chop up. Welcome if you're joining us on the replay on YouTube. So this is live on Facebook. That's why the quality is a little bit fuzzier but if you're joining us on the replay on YouTube, the recipe will be listed right below in the instructions there. So. I hope that you get a chance to make this. All right, so we're just dicing up this chicken and we're gonna just pan fry it with a little bit of garlic and some salt and pepper and then we'll move on to the vegetables and our seasonings. Like I said, this is super simple. You are not gonna get an easier dish than this one. No complications here. And what's nice about it too is that you can basically use what's ever in your fridge. So if you have a crisper full of vegetables that need to get used up, chop them up, get them uh, in the pan. And I find with this recipe too, there's a lot of things that would maybe typically be in your fridge anyway. So you've got peppers, broccoli, onions, um, chicken, and then all of the condiments that are kind of my staple go-tos anyway. So things like your soy sauce, or if you wanted to go gluten-free, you use the Bragg's, um, Coconut aminos or liquid aminos is an option for a gluten-free soy sauce idea. Uh, using a little hot sauce, using some honey or maple syrup to sweeten if you want, and then a little white vinegar. And those are all staples that people have in their cupboard. So sometimes when it's hard to know what to make, this is a great go-to because you will probably have everything that you need. Okay, so oil is heating up. I'm just gonna wash my hands up here and we're gonna put some garlic and our chicken right into our cast iron skillet there. Excellent. So we finally look like we're having some sun here in Kelowna. It's a very nice day. As you can see, the sun is shining in the windows. So nice to finally see that. All right. So just at a high heat, I'm gonna add my chicken here. And we'll cook that right till it's all trans uh, white throughout and no pink left. Okay, I'll let that just do its thing for a little bit, get rid of this chicken plate. Chop up some garlic here now. Okay. So one garlic right into that. Got a 
Now this is nice as a as a weekday meal. And again, making extra so that you can have this for lunch the next day. That's such an easy way to have your protein prepared, right? So a lot of people always say to me, um, you know, what should I have for lunches? It's hard for me to get lunches prepared and often I just kind of go out to eat because I've got nothing in the fridge that's got protein in it. But I always cook extra the night before, even if it's just the protein. You can add it onto a salad, uh, mix it into a soup, put it on top of some lettuce and make your own kind of sandwich that way. Okay, so we've got our chicken breast and garlic in here. And we'll just let that do its thing. I'm gonna get it with a little salt and pepper. Welcome, welcome if you're just joining. Is anyone cooking today? Is any one of you out there cooking? Christine or Colleen, you guys got your uh, food going on? Anyone cooking with me today? Well, hopefully you will get a chance to make this because it's going to be super easy and super tasty. Okay, just a little salt and pepper there. Probably half a teaspoon of salt I'm going to add to that. Good. Okay, it's going to cook and we are going to go watch our vegetables. This is going to move fast, I tell you. Hi. No cooking today, Colleen. That's okay. Nikki, I know you probably just want to come over to eat and not cook this yourself, right? <laughs> well, that's okay. We're cooking this one. You could even do yourself. It's so easy and so quick that you're just going to love it. Okay, washing up our vegetables. I'm going to put in one red pepper, one green pepper, and some broccoli, a cup of broccoli. So just give these a good chop. And bite-sized pieces is good take up some of these ribs here. So let's move into our first topic of conversation that I wanted to talk to you about, which was basically, what are the conversations that I believe that we should have when it comes to our relationship with food? And the first conversation that I think is super important is to be compassionate to yourself when it comes to your relationship with food. So we all grew up with different upbringings and different ways to look at food. Some people have had you know, issues because their parents didn't know too much about food. So they were served whatever mom could put on the table. Sometimes it was cereal for dinner. I mean, I had that a few times too. But a lot of our past has to do with how we perceive food, what we think about food. Um, I had a client once who was very afraid of being hungry ever. She, she didn't like to be hungry, didn't ever want the feeling of hunger. And that, you know, that was from a childhood. It stemmed from a long time ago. So, so there's issues, you know, if you have issues with food and with your nutrition, just know that it probably comes from a place in your past somewhere. And to just have compassion for that component of you, of you when it does arise. I was in um, Winner's change room the other day, and this thing is sitting here. And I heard a mother and daughter talking, and I broke my heart. I actually kind of wanted to <laughs> press record so I could show you guys some of the conversation that was going on. It was it was so sad about how the mother was talking about her body, and. Um, and her daughter was trying to console her and comfort her. And she put on a piece of clothing and just say, oh, my legs are so fat. This green color makes me look fat. I don't like it. Maybe grab something else. And the daughter was trying to say, no, mom, you know, you look good. I think it looks great. Don't, don't be so hard on yourself. And I'm just thinking this daughter is, you know, hearing every single thing that the mom is saying about herself. And whether she knows it or not, it's writing on the slate of who she is too, right? So, I mean, we, we grow up with scenarios like that. And I think if we can just remember to have compassion for that part of us, that goes so much further than those negative automatic thoughts that are so quickly there um, in our relationship with food. So, you know, that's a big thing. I like to focus on that. And... Um, I feel like that's kind of the most important thing about nutrition. It's, it's easy for me to give you ideas of what to cook and 
recipes of what to make and how to eat clean and healthy. And a lot of people can take that and go for a little while, but then always seem to go back into their same old patterns of behavior. Do you, have you done that? Do you ever do that? And that's what I'm talking about. It's that stuff that we need to sort of dig a little bit deeper. And once we see that it's there, have compassion and begin the journey of taking a look at and seeing what that's all about. Okay, that was tip one. I'm gonna leave the peppers there. Let's give this a stir again. So with a cast iron, you gotta be a little bit aggressive with the bottom. Sometimes it sticks a little. We do have our oil in there. But that's okay, that looks good. Good. That is almost ready. You know what I forgot to put in there is garlic, so let's just hit that with some garlic right now. No, I did put it in, didn't I? See? Is my mind when I chat. Okay. Cutting up our broccoli. So we're just gonna cut this into little bite-sized pieces here. So it's not too big for our pan. I like to use that stock part. That's actually my favorite part. Who likes the stock part of broccoli? Anyone out there? Or do you just eat the florets? Florets. Florets or florets? I don't know. I don't care even, but we're chopping them up today. Okay, so broccoli just getting into little bite-sized pieces here. And again, this can be paired with, you know, whatever side you want, but having it with just the vegetables, the chicken, makes it extremely low carb. So if you're looking for a low carb option, uh, we talked about that in past videos that that's often a way to burn body fat in your body is to make sure that you know your carb tipping point. And if you don't understand what I mean by that, if you're on the YouTube replay, there's going to be a little eye right at the top here and you can click on that and that will take you to a video to explain that carb tipping point to you. But basically what it is, is that amount of carbs that kind of, you need enough for energy but not too many so that they get stored as fat in the body. Uh, by and large, as a society, we eat far too many carbohydrates and so that's often what causes weight gain for a lot of us. Alright, so my broccoli is chopped up. We're going to look at the chicken again here. Not far from be being done now. With a few pink pieces. Okay, I'm gonna need that one more minute. One that is done, we're going to um, put the chicken aside and we'll cook the vegetables in that pan. But while I'm waiting, I will take my bowl and we're gonna make our sauce. Okay. So it's a super simple sauce. We're just going to take a few of the ingredients that are listed there down below, um, or if you've got the little blue recipe card that was on the front of my Facebook post. We're gonna start with the coconut aminos, and we're gonna put a half a cup of those in. So this is like soy sauce, but gluten-free and lower sodium. So if you're trying to get lower sodium into your life these days, this is a really great option. You can buy this at Nature's Fair. And to me, it looks and tastes like soy sauce, so I don't think you can go wrong there. So that's gonna go into my bowl there. Also added to that, we're gonna do two tablespoons of white vinegar. I'm gonna eyeball this, but if you want to use a little measuring, you can. So two tablespoons of white vinegar. Good, uh, we have a little bit of honey. Now on the recipe, it does say quarter of a cup of honey or maple syrup. Uh, I think I'm gonna do around an eighth of a cup. Just because I don't want mine overly sweet, I find that the vegetables will add that sweetness that I need. So again, I'm just eyeballing this myself. And that's probably a quarter cup of honey. Okay, we're gonna put some fresh ginger and garlic in, but I think it's time to take my chicken off. Yes, that looks done, that looks good. And once we, uh, once we put our vegetables in there with the sauce, it's going to um, get all those little brown bits off of the bottom of the pan. The only thing with this is that, my goodness, this is so heavy. Oh, sun number two is leaving. Goodbye, sun number two. See, that's what happens around dinner time here. Heading off to work today. All right, see ya, hon. So I'm just going to leave that there. We'll just turn that off for now. 
And let's get some uh, ginger and garlic all ready to go. And then we'll put our pan back on and get the rest of our veggies going. So I was going to say that the reason why that's so heavy for my arm is because I broke my wrist about maybe two or three years ago now. I don't know if you know that story, but it's actually kind of a good story because basically I grew up doing gymnastics and I, for years and years and years, like into my 30s, I'm almost 50 now, so into my 30s, I was able to do an aerial, right? So that's a cartwheel with no hands. And I would do it off of um, like a picnic table because I had done it for years and years, so then I was able to do it. I'm just chopping up my garlic here. And so one day we were at our friend's house in the Lower Mainland on a, like a September long weekend, eating breakfast, everyone's still in their pajamas, and my son and um, husband call my bluff, basically, and said, hey mom, you think you can still do that, Ariel? Why don't you do it right now? And I'm like, yeah, I could totally do it. Well, yeah, I'll go do it. That's fine. I don't, I'm not scared. You don't scare me. So I went out onto their trampoline and started to warm up, as it were. And I did great. I did probably about 10 aerials on the trampoline, putting my feet back on here, getting my vegetables going. And so I did about 10 aerials. I was feeling pretty good. Although I have to say my heart was kind of rapidly beating because I think maybe subconsciously in the back of my mind, I was thinking, what if I can't land it? Like what, what if it doesn't work? Ooh, what is going to happen then? But alas, I trusted my, um, in my former abilities to do it. Okay. Coming back to the story in a second, I'm just going to add this garlic, a little more coconut oil, maybe about another teaspoon of coconut oil here. I'm going to get my veggies in right away so they don't burn the garlic here. He is at uh, medium low, okay, so it's not burn. Nice, that looks good. And then I'll shred up some ginger right away here. Okay, just a little stir. Give this a little wash, my soapy water. Okay, so I'll just give this a little toss. That looks gorgeous, those red and green colors, so nice in here. All right, I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of water as well, just to give a little steam. So, just maybe a tablespoon or two of water. All right, we'll let that do its thing. So, shredding my ginger now. So anyway, I get up there, I'm about to throw this aerial off the edge of a deck. So, like, the landing is about like that high off the ground. But I'm confident, right? Because I practice on the trampoline and for my whole life I can do this. My son goes up, throws a backflip. He's like, come on, mom, you can do it. I'm like, yeah, I know, I can totally do it. Anyway, there's a video of this if you're interested and want to see it. It's on my Instagram. You can actually hear the crack. So I go up. Boom, ba, 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 ba. Hand goes down, not supposed to. You're supposed to do an aerial. Hands are supposed to be by your side or crisscross or not on the ground. My left hand goes down, large crack, just like crack. And I stand up and start hopping and say, oh my God, Quentin, I broke my wrist. And then we spent the afternoon in the hospital. So that's why it's hard for me to lift a cast iron skillet, just like that. Anyway, hey Valerie and Tim watching from Bali. Why are you watching? You should be going swimming and such. We have some uh, people that are in Bali right now I can see and they are watching our cooking show. Maybe this is what you wanna make for dinner, hey? All right, shredding up some ginger. Anyway, the best part of that story is that I go into the um, ER and the lady says to me, the nurse in the triage says, how old are you? I say 45, I was 45 at the time. 
And she goes, so what happened? What were you doing? I'm like, I was trying to do an aerial. And she puts down her pen and looks at me and says, good for you. I'm like, thank you, right? My husband shakes his head. Good for you for even trying that. So I thought, you know what? You're never too old, except for when you are too old and then it's too late, but you're never too old to give something a try again. I really actually did think that I would land it because of, I was fit and I just thought I could do it, but alas, I digress, I couldn't, but I now need two hands to lift my cast iron skillet. Okay, turning our heat back up, we have been cooking for, it looks like 15, 16, 19 minutes and we're almost done. Honestly, we just have to cook the vegetables. I'm going to show you quickly how to do a little zoodle. So these are pan frying, finishing off our sauce here. So in our dish here that we're going to add to our chicken and vegetables, we have a little coconut aminos in place of soy sauce. I've got some white vinegar. I've got some honey. I'm going to add a little bit of hot sauce. So you could add sambal olic for heat, which is like that chili paste, or you could do um, chili flakes. That goes right into there as well. And we're also going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. So back to here. And that's it for the sauce. It's pretty simple. Um, if you wanted to, you know, cut some of the um, sodium levels in half, you may not even need that salt, so you could just season with it afterwards and, and test it and add a little bit of water too. Okay, to this broth, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, my arrowroot. So that's a gluten-free option, paleo option. If you want to use cornstarch, that's an option as well. So I'm grabbing that from my cupboard here. And you can just, if you don't want to buy a big thing of this, you can just buy it at um, your Save On Foods in the bulk section. That's what I like to do. Okay. So now, sometimes I've done this where you can put it right on the chicken when you pan fry it, so you coat the chicken in it. Or you could just do it into the cold liquid like this. That's an option as well. You just have to make sure that when the liquid hits the pan, that you cook it to thicken it so it takes a little bit longer. But I'm just going to mix that around with this extremely cute little whisk. What? How do they make them that little? I feel like I'm playing house with this little whisk. All right. So whisking that up. Once we add that, I'm going to give you my second conversation that I think every person should have when it comes to our nutrition. So give that a stir. Good. And that's ready to go into our pan. So the heat is up. Now I like to cook my vegetables tender crisp. I, if they are overdone, I'm out. That is it. I really like them to have a little bit of crunch to them. So if you want it to be a little bit longer or a little bit softer of a vegetable, uh, my dad likes it a little bit softer just for his teeth and such, then feel free to cook this for another few minutes. But to me, that looks like it's ready to add our sauce. Okay, so in this goes. Good. And that smells really good. Ginger, garlic, all of those flavors together. So delicious. The soy sauce or the coconut aminos. All right. So just bringing that to a light simmer, I'm going to reduce my heat again and let that thicken. And right here, right now, I'm adding my chicken back in. Okay. And we'll just let that all come together nicely. <coughs> On low. Okay. Looking good. Looking very bright, very festive. If it were Christmas, this would be a great Christmas dish because it's all red and green and such. But. All right. Chopping up my onions and then we're going to work on our zoodles and I'm going to give you my second tip right here. Okay, so my second conversation I think that we should have when it comes to our relationship with food is to not be so singular in our thoughts. I really believe that it should be more all-encompassing. Um, so what I mean by that is a lot of people just, you know, would call me and say, hey, I need a fitness routine. Can you give me a fitness routine? So I'd work on a plan and a program for them, show them how to do it, help them execute a fitness routine. And they would do it. And in three months, all of a sudden, they kind of drop off the face of the earth and they don't do it any longer. 
and or I might give someone a clean eating plan and talk about give them some nutritional counseling and then all of a sudden you know they get busy at work and they can no longer commit to exercise and I guess the point here is is that it's all interconnected right our fitness affects our wellness affects our nutrition so for an example if you in your wellness component can't sleep at night and you can and you can't get more than three to four hours of sleep at night because maybe the stress at work is too high maybe the stress in your relationships are too high and for whatever reason it's just causing you sleepless nights well what happens to the body is then now we get surges of ghrelin this hormone that's actually our go hormone so now we want to eat everything in the afternoon so now our nutrition goes to pot and because we're feeling so sluggish from all the sugar we ate in the afternoon we don't feel like exercising so it's it's really a 360 holistic approach to wellness as a whole if what you want in your life is to feel good to be at peace to have joy and to feel confident in your body. And I think sometimes we isolate those things. So I'm just gonna focus on nutrition, going on an extreme diet. I'm not gonna worry about you know my wellness, my relationships, my um, other parts of my health, or I'm not gonna worry about my fitness, I'm just gonna do this diet. Well, that's all fine and good for again for three months or six months or however long you can endure it. And then when you're back on and you gain weight back, all of a sudden now you are berating yourself for gaining weight and how can I do this? And I hate myself and I, you know, I'm so unhappy. So I, my approach to um, health as a whole is really to encompass all of those components. Fitness, wellness, nutrition. I have a client and I, we talk about this all the time and I just love it. It's, it is so endearing to me because I can go to her house and I can train her and she can tell me that she, you know, is struggling with depression and how can we work through those components and how, how will food help me? How will sleep help me? How will this help me? Um, you know, and we can share together that exercise is one of the number one ways to treat uh, you know, mental health issues uh, because of its natural increase in serotonin. So there's so many different wonderful benefits of looking at your health, your life, your wellness as this all-encompassing approach and not just an isolated approach. So do you agree with that? I would like to hear your comments right below. Feel free to chime in and let me know what you think. If you think it's all encompassing or if we should just isolate one thing and work on one thing at a time and not get overwhelmed because sometimes it can feel overwhelming. All right, I've chopped up my green onions. That's going on top with my cup of cashews. But before we get to that plating, because we are almost ready to plate, everything is relatively cooked. I'm going to show you how to do the zoodles. All right, so I'm just going to give this one more stir here. Yummy, that looks great, smells great. Um, now, my husband's not home right now, he's away in Vancouver for work, so when I look at this amount here, I think this is gonna feed four people, not, I'm glad he's not here for the fact that this would not be enough food for all of us. Unless I did a big side, like um, the cauliflower rice, um, or, you know, brown rice or something like that. Okay, that is, as good as ready, so I'm just gonna put that on low. Now, does anyone have a zoodler, like an attachment to their KitchenAid or a spiralizer for their zucchini zoodles? Does anyone have that? Thumbs up if you do. Quentin got me this for my birthday last year, so it's pretty simple. I'll just, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, so underneath, well, let's get a pan going first because we're gonna do a little quick saute as soon as it's ready. So pan up there. High heat. Now, of course, if you don't have a spiralizer or a zoodler, you could just slice this into long, thin strips, right? The zucchini. Uh, you could chop it and dice it and just have pieces like that. Or you could also um, just cut it into really skinny strips. That's an option as well. Okay, so a little bit of coconut in my pan. Just, I'm just gonna do about a, Half a teaspoon there. It's getting to slim pickings at the bottom of this pan, that's for sure. Okay, 
Are you excited to see my spiralizer? Here we go. So, you take it. You, you place it on the out. We're going to cut it in half because it doesn't fit when it's that long. I'll do two batches. Take it. Pierce the end. This goes into it. And then put a bowl under. And cut as you go. Otherwise, you get super long strands. So here we go. Okay. Fun. Choppy. Just a little slice with my finger. Yay. Fun, huh? Can you see that from there even? And done. Okay. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so that's what it looks like. Cool, huh? Okay. So that is going to go right into our pan here. I'll put a little oil. I'll do the next one here. So that just comes back. You can chop that part up if you want, or I'm just going to dip it today. And the other half. So this won't be a big hit with the boys, but Piper and I love the uh, zoodler, so. All right, here we go. season that with, um, you know, just a little bit of pesto. It doesn't really match the flavor of what we've got going on here tonight, but that's often, if I serve that as a side, that's what I mix it with is a little bit of pesto. You can use a store-bought pesto or you can make your own uh, high in fat, so just be mindful not to overdo it there. Uh, today, actually, I think I'll just keep it plain because there is some sauce in my pan and then I'll just layer that on top and use that as my seasoning. So really simple, like as long as it would take you to um, cook up zucchini in a pan, which does not take long at all. And again, if you want them tender, crisp, as I like it, then it's not going to take long. Okay, so that's going to get going. I'm going to turn it down just a bit and I'm going to give you my last tip and then we're going to plate our dinner. So my final tip about a conversation that I think you should have about food is around the concept of mindfulness while we're eating. This whole um, eating psychology is, is an up and coming concept for a lot of people. I thought about, I've, I've, I've been talking about it for years because as I've trained clients, a lot of people of my clients have been able to stick with their plans and programs and a lot of people haven't and it always just pulled at my heartstrings as to how it worked for some and it didn't work for others and what what else could I do to help people along the journey of this and so that's kind of where this mindful eating came up so I'm just going to give you a few tips on how to be mindful in the presence of your food so some of the big things that I tell my clients are to be mindful about the food mindfulness basically is drawing attention to the moment it's being present in the now so if you're watching your television, you're sitting in front of your computer, or you have your phone, you're in your car, there's no way that you can be present with the food right there and in the moment. So if you can, as many times as you can, as often as you can, try to make your meal time sacred in the sense that you are sitting down with your food and being present with your nutrition in that moment. Um, what happens then if we're distracted, some, you know, we're on our phones or the TV or the newspaper or whatever, so often we could not even recognize our own satiety levels. Are we hungry? Am I full? Um, you know, am I eating because I feel sad or am I eating because, you know, I'm actually need sustenance? So those types of things can't be acknowledged if we're busy doing other things with our brains. So. I know we women can multitask, but in this instance, let's try to just keep mindfulness as the forefront, in the forefront of our brain. We're gonna just add a little bit of zoodles. Again, this acts as our carb. It tricks the brain to think 
We are having a carb, and that's just kind of like pan fried little zucchini noodles. So that's really tasty. And on top of that is going to be our chicken, broccoli, peppers, right? All that goodness there. Now, of course, you could just um, add your cashews and your green onions right to that, but I'm just going to do a little presentation for you here and sprinkle some on top. This way, I guess you can control how many cashews you get. And a good tip on that one too is instead of buying whole nuts, buy the sliced nuts because you get more crunch and a little will go a long way. Okay, we are done. So that is the dish. I will take a picture if you are watching this on the replay and post it right here. All right, so, so delicious. I hope that you give this a try. And just as a recap, here's what we talked about today in terms of our relationship with food. Number one, Remember to have compassion for where you're at in your life. It doesn't mean that you don't move forward. It doesn't mean that you just go, oh, I'm compassionate for myself and that's good, I'm good to go. It's that you have compassion and now you move forward with consistency towards your health goals. Number two, make sure that you don't isolate just one segment of um, your health. So not just fitness, not just your nutrition, not just wellness. Look at it as an all-encompassing movement towards your very best health and your very best life. And number three, make sure that you include this conversation of mindfulness. Be mindful when you eat your food. Try to be present and in the moment when you're consuming without devices, no TV, no newspaper, not driving your car. And try to just notice the sensations in your body. Am I hungry? Am I full? Am I sad? Am I lonely? Am I bored? Whatever it is, notice and be compassionate to those things in yourself. All right, thanks for joining you guys. I would love it if you could post any comments below and especially of what you would like to see next. I know I've been cooking a lot of chicken. These last four dishes have been chicken and I'm telling you the truth, next week you're gonna die. This dish is so good that I'm cooking. It's called the Island Pork Tenderloin Salad. And it's our family favorite. The pork cooks in 20 minutes in the 400 degree oven and it comes out juicy and tender and it's so delicious. The salad is the bomb with a curry vinaigrette. Ah, you're gonna love it. Okay, so tune in for that. Make sure you do. And grab the ingredients and cook along with me because you gotta cook anyways. Might as well make it as we go. All right, go enjoy your broccoli, peppered, cashew, chicken. Thanks for watching. See ya.